All right, so we're gonna start, if we want, we could just make introductions, um, do some simple introductions. And the iPhone is Jonathan from the Latino Counseling Center. So I don't know if Focus Springfield wants to change that or if you want me to change it. Oh, Jonathan did it. Also, then we have another iPhone. Um, who might that That's me, that's me, Zeta. Christine? Cindy. Cindy, oh, okay, that's Cindy Clemens, okay. So that's Cindy Clemens. I don't know if um, um, Focus Springfield wants to change it or if I can change it. I'm not sure if I can. Let me see. No, I can't change it. So that's Cindy Clemens' um, focus. I think that might be Susan. All right. So we'll just um, we'll start if that's okay. Because of course you all know how. Um, important our time is. Um, so I'll start with you, uh, Rep. Popolo's, uh representative, Sherry. Ah. Introduce yourself. Hi, uh, I'm Sherry uh, Spinks, and I've worked with um, Representative Pupolo for just over 12 and a half years now. And, Thank um, you. and I'm glad to be here. I work in the district office usually, so, um, so I get to meet with the constituents more and things like that and talk to them. So this this is going to inform me as well as him. So I'm looking forward. Excellent. To Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, uh, Mr. Kraft. Hi, everyone. I'm Ben Kraft. I'm the vice president of community engagement for the Center for Human Development, also known as CHD. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, we have a big presence in uh, Hamden County and Springfield. And so I apologize for being late to the party, but um, I'm here to represent us and see how you know we can help. So thank you for having me. Thank you, and I'm so glad you're here, um, Ben. And Tiffany? Good evening. Hi, everybody. My name is Tiffany Rufino. I am the Youth Mental Health Coalition Manager, which is convened by the Public Health Institute of Western Mass. And I'm just really excited to be here and be a part of the conversation. Thanks, Ida. Thank you. Thank you for having, for being here, rather. Um, and Beverly, did you want to introduce yourself or do you want me to tell them? No. Hi. No taker. Uh, glad to be here. <laughs> most important person here today. <laughs> um, Nicole. Hi, everybody. I'm Nicole DeLoyer. I'm a family and community health worker, but I really come to the table to bring um, family and personal experience. Yes, thank you so much. Jonathan. Good afternoon. Jonathan from Latino Counseling Center. Thank you. Ayana. Ayana, we can't hear you if you're speaking. So that's Ayana Crawford. She's actually from Representative Orlando Ramos's office. She's her um his chief chief of staff. I hope she can um, be able to talk. All right, and um, Cindy. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so I'm Cynthia Clemens from Safe Harbor Adult Senior Services. Um, my primary focus of practice is education for those with Alzheimer's, dementia, and other behavioral issues. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. All right, so we'll just get right into our, this meeting. And I, first of all, I wanna thank the state legislators who are here. I'm hoping there'll be um, more that will join us uh, later on. We really want the senators um, and the other reps as well to um, join us. Uh, but the reason, and I'll give you a little bit of background, Sherry, um, Ayana, she's been at the table for a while, but um, basically what we've been doing is, um, in January of this year, when I became um, a city councilor, I was very concerned about mental health, of course, as being a social worker. And we had a really um, a bad tragedy happen um, where a person who was looking for or needed um, mental health services was in a crisis and sadly um, and tragically lost um, their lives, Orlando um, Taylor. Um, because of that, this committee was formed at the city council um, to address crises in the city of Springfield. Um, we know that, you know, 
crisis happen all the time. And the response that we need to have has to be, um, you know, appropriate for our city. Um, I think that we do a great job with what we have and we've heard from other agencies and other people um, that um, do that kind of work. So um, we've been meeting to come up with a plan to address these issues, right? We actually had some um, social work awareness workshops in March. Uh, we've had some mental health checkup days. We talked about mental health checkup days and Kathy um, from BHN actually has some information. We've been doing some uh, research as to, oh, Jennifer's here. Hi, Jennifer. Um, as to um, what we can do in response um, and help the agencies address this problem, right? Because I don't think any one person can do it by themselves. No one agency can do it. So I'm really excited to have CHD here. I'm excited to have, you know, uh, the lot. Latino Counseling Center here um, because we all need to work together. And that's what our plan is. So the reason we wanted our state legislatures here was to see what kind of support we could get from the state level and see what it is that we might need to do to maybe activate some support at the state level. Um, I know that in Connecticut, I heard a story it was, I think, three or four months ago, but they had, I think, $50 billion in surplus. And they've decided to take $30 billion of that, or it could be a million, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but they decided to take a large portion of that money and invest it in mental health, specifically youth mental health, which I'm really excited that um, uh, Tiffany is here with the Youth Mental Health Coalition, because that's where I think, you know, our, our focus um, should be focused on because, of course, they're going to be adults um, later on. And as Nicole knows, um, you know, we we carry this with us everywhere we go. Mental health is uh, a community problem and it's a, a really broad problem that a lot of people have. So that's the reason we wanted our state reps here and our legislatures. Um, and I want to give you an opportunity to maybe share what you guys are aware of, what you think we might be doing or we should do differently or we could be doing differently. Um, so go ahead. And first of all, I'm going to have Jen introduce herself from uh, Senator Lester's office. Thank you, Zeta. Um, I'm happy to be here. I'm Jennifer Metch. I'm the district director for Senator Eric Lesser. Soon we have a brand new employee on his fourth day of employment with us. Um, he is the district legis legislative aide. Um, Stefan uh, Chach is coming on soon. Oh, there he is. I'm here. So, yeah. um, I, I will say that we have, um, there is a mental health bill that was passed August 1, and I hope it's 114 pages. I don't think anybody's read it entirely. I'm sorry, I don't have a summary for you today, but there's a lot of very good um, opportunity in there for the connection for community uh, to access, which is great. Excellent. Excellent. Stefan, you want to introduce yourself, and then I'm going to let Maria from the Latino Counseling Center introduce yourself. Thank you, Jen. Well, well, thank you, Jen, for being here. Happy to. Sure. Sure, thank you. Yeah, my name is Stefan Chach. Uh, like Jen said, I'm the district legislative aide as of this past Monday for Senator Lester's office. So um, obviously, this is my first meeting with the Springfield City Council. And um, I, I did have a chance to look at your, the agenda sent earlier today. Um, I have actually have it up right now on my computer. So I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, good things come out of this meeting and how we can help on the state side. All right, great. Thank you so much. And Maria? You're muted, Mama. You myself. Hi, everyone. Um, good evening. I'm Maria um, Silva. I'm here with Latino Counseling. We have two offices here in Springfield, downtown Springfield, servicing the community um, up to 8 o'clock, providing outpatient services for the youth and um, Actually, we have psychiatric services as well, including in Saturdays. Um, so we are working very closely with the community. Thank you. Thank you so much. And something that I neglected to mention, I'm gonna let um, Senator, I mean, Rep. Ramos introduce himself, but um, is that we're meeting for six meetings. We've had, I wanna say five, and um, we're meeting for six meetings and 
doing all this work and all these meetings to come up with a plan for the city of Springfield to be able to respond to crises. And of course, like I said, we can't do it by ourselves. One agency can't do it. One person can't do it. And that's the reason we're collaborating. So I'm really excited to have the state legislatures here. Um, Rep Ramos, would you like to just say hi and, and welcome and we wanna welcome you. Sure, thank you for having me. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, Orlando Ramos, state representative on the Ninth Hamlet District. I'm happy to be here with all of you. Um, just eager to learn uh, how I can be helpful with this issue. Um, I think that it was, uh, um, you know, the city council was on the right track and putting this um, committee together, uh, especially in the times that we're living in today and, and, and post COVID. Um, you know, mental health is going to be a, a, a huge issue, and, and I'm glad that we're all realizing it. In fact, the uh, state legislature, as you know, has taken action by passing a mental health bill um, earlier in the session. So, um, you know, I'm just eager to learn how, how I can be helpful. And uh, I thank you all for the work that you do and the time and effort that you're putting into this, into this endeavor. Thank you. Thank you, Rep Ramos. Um, I would really love to hear about that mental health bill. <laughs> um, does anyone have any insight into it? See how... Um, it's going to affect the city of Springfield, or do we have to read the 167 pages? <laughs> I can send you some bullet points. Um, I can send you a one pager that, uh, that sort of explains the bill, and you can share that with your committee members. That would be very helpful, um, Representative. I would really appreciate that. And I will tell you, sure, part no of problem. it is about access, but also about um, working to recruit more mental health professionals to the region, which we know there's an enormous shortage, even just in um, child and adolescent psychiatry, as well as um, therapists, but also beds. We're looking at, uh, there's been almost no beds available. There's not one space to put anybody. And that's been really tragic and an, not the way to treat anybody. So there's a, a real concerted effort to try to work with um, current uh, hospitals and uh, other facilities to find out what we can do to get dedicated beds. Okay, that's area. amazing. That's great. It's and so looking, needed. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to the, um, the one pager yeah. that uh, Representative Ramos is going to graciously put together for us. I'd like for our providers to share with the state legislatures the barriers that you guys encounter. Um, I can talk about what I've encountered in my private practice, but um, you know, I re I'm really glad that they're trying to recruit um, more providers. And there are a lot of providers out there. However, the dilemma is the reimbursement rates, right? That the insurance companies, you know, don't want to pay what they're supposed to be paying, in my opinion. Um, and I'll, I'll let, I'll let the, um, the provider speak. If, if, would you like to um, talk about that a little bit, Ben? Sure, I'd be happy to. Hi, and thank you. It's nice to see so many folks from the delegation here with their ears listening to us. It's really appreciated uh, for all of you. So thank you. And, you know, Jen, it's, you sort of almost stole my talking points. You know, it, the, really the issue here our biggest pain point, and you know, we are the largest provider in the region, is just pure staffing, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's the pain right now. Keeping programs open, um, keeping programs appropriately and safely staffed, um, being able to pay people competitive wages with the money that the state allocates for these crucial services like DYS, DCF you know, severe mental health challenges. Um, it's really, really a struggle right now. And I don't tend to go into hysterical language, but I have to tell you at the leadership level at CHD, it's pretty much all we talk about right now. How can we provide services and how can we staff programs when we are competing, you know, unfortunately, and no knock on these big employers, but we are competing with the Amazon warehouse. We are competing with Target. We are competing with you know, people that historically we have not had to compete with for staff because there is such a crunch right now. Mm -hmm. um, today we had our biweekly leadership meeting and we spent the entire two hours talking about staffing. So there is something that could help in addition, you know, we really appreciate the Mental Health ABC Act and we think 
There's so much in it that has the potential to make things better, to do you know what we're all intent on doing, which is not having providers complaining, but rather being able to provide more services to more people in our community, in all our communities. Um, there are some good things in there. There's another good thing that has the potential to happen. There are monies in the economic development bill that I know did not get over the finish line and I understand the reasons for it, but there's a significant, um, there's a significant amount of resources in there that could really be used by providers to bolster the, the wages that they're able to pay people, particularly in DDS disability programs. And you know, I know there's some things that need to play out with the excess money in the budget. I don't know if any of you would call it excess money, probably not, but I'm probably not supposed to say that. But I know I know stuff has to play out there over the next few weeks. And I don't know what's gonna happen in informal session, but I think the economic development bill certainly has some potential to help us in the provider space. And I see heads nodding, which I'm taking as a good sign. So I'll stop after that and I hope that was helpful. Thank you, thank you. Um, who, who wants to speak for the Latino Counseling Center? <laughs> Uh, same here, such as Ben said. I mean, the show death is 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 incredible. We 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 struggle. Um, uh, fortunately, we we are trying to do a slow growth, so that has worked for us. You know, um, we we continue to hire, but it still it continues to be a struggle to maintain programs like CBHI going with mentoring. And, and, and the schools now that started and the needs that there are in, especially in this community um, with the school starting, it, it, it is, it's incredible. Um, and the reimbursement, like you said, Seda, reimbursement, people want more for what they do. Mental health is not easy. The pressure uh, working in mental health, it, it's not something that you cannot just not pay you know, someone who went for master's and have student loans and it's hard. It's, it's yeah. extremely hard as an employer to acquire somebody with an education and not be able to pay them for the type of work that they do and the amount of hours that they have to put in to do the work. It's, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, so it, it is a struggle. It definitely is. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tiffany, do you want to talk about the youth mental health aspect of it and, and what maybe the state legislatures might be able to support us on? I'm sure where our uh, coalition is really focusing on preventative um, preventative methods uh, to, to youth mental health. And um, some of our strategies is through professional development and community education. And we're finding that um, a lot of employers are looking for um, or have access to training, but not necessarily uh, like a lot of folks have been talking about today, the funding to be able to pay the clinicians to be able to access and take the trainings that we have available for them. Um, and so I think that would be an area is, you know, again, just providing additional funding so that they can, the clinicians can get, you know, culturally competent trainings and um, things of that nature that would, that would make their jobs easier or uh, not easier, but uh, easier to handle, I guess I would say. Um, we're also doing a lot of work around mentoring, peer mentoring and trying to really understand the, la understand the landscape of um, near peer mentoring in the Springfield area so that we can create more opportunities for youth to have access to trusted adults and, and peers that they can, they can speak to. Um, in our research and conversations with youth, they really are seeking out those near peer relationships um, and mentoring. And um, yeah, I think that's that's all I'll share for right now. Thank you. Um, and I don't want to make it, you know, sound like all we need is money. <laughs> that, that would solve a lot of problems, maybe. Um, but I think at the state level, I know that you all, you know, have the ability to pass budgets and stuff. But I think that 
somehow we need to find a way to address the insurance company issue, you know, um, yeah. and, and maybe next month I'm going to try to invite them. I don't know if they'll come, <laughs> um, but you know, their, their reimbursement rates are ridiculous, you know, for the amount of work they do. Maria touched on it as far as, you know, um, people come out of, of uh, you know, college with a master's degree, they're going to have $80,000 in student loans with interest accruing. We just saw the student loan forgiveness um, thing that happened, which was not enough in my opinion, but, you know, they come out and then they're going to get paid what they could make at McDonald's, you know, they'll why don't they just go to work at McDonald's, which is in nothing against McDonald's, but the same rate of pay for someone with a master's degree um, is an issue. So at some point, I'd like to be able to figure out a way where we can, um, you know, coordinate or talk to the insurance companies about that part of it, you know, because I think that would solve a lot of the problems and we wouldn't have to depend on, you know, the state budgets to, to do all this work that's necessary. Um, I'd, I'd like to hear from the community. Nicole, you wanna talk a little bit about what you think that the uh, legislatures might be able to support us with and how can, we can support them? Um, I don't think that I have really much to add outside of what's already been contributed. I just really wanna second a lot of what people are, are already saying um, about both access to what we need um, and, I think as somebody who has accessed every service, every level of service, I've had every CBHI program, I've had every mental health treatment, I have DDS, I have DMH. So I've sought out state agency support in, in other things. And one observation that I make is that every time I turn around, I get told we don't have something available. And it's interesting because I hear about how it's available over in Boston and in Worcester and all these other areas. But I feel like I live in the wild, wild west where everything is forgotten. Um, as sadly as it is to say, I, I do agree, like where Zeta saying, I don't want to sound greedy, like we're just saying, give us money, money, money. But a lot of it is resources, it is supports, it is access to what we need, I, you know, finding extracurricular activities or funding to even do those types of things. Those are key in keeping a kid out of crisis, right? You're talking about a kid who's spending days in an ER, but we could have worked on getting their community needs met. And so right. I just really think that we need to put more focus into what Western Mass, what Western Mass is able to access over here in comparison to what other areas may have access to. Thank you, Nicole. That's a very important point. Of course, Western Mass to Boston, there's a big divide. Um, Jonathan, go ahead. Oh, you're muted. I would like to add that people, um, often they lose their medical insurance. Clients often lose their medical insurances. Um, we have many clinicians um, trying to do a work with their patients, uh, but at the same time, doing the documentation um, it's a lot of work for them to like to, to find the time um, to, to do the documentation. The medical insurance just give us 45 minutes, um, 60 minutes, um, no more than that. And, and they also are giving us 24 sections. Uh, so do our, do, we just have 24 sections per year. Um, most of the time we have also a lot of clients that they don't show up. They lose, like I, I said, um, lose their medical insurance. So it's very hard for a clinician to to see um, the behavioral health feel as a as a job because they don't see they cannot see the consistency in what they're doing. And when you cannot see the consistency in what you're doing, the cash flow, the productivity that you are expecting to do is is hard to for for a clinician. To, to to keep doing what they're doing because they, they can, they, they don't, it's hard for them to, to see that consistency. Uh, so yes, definitely clinicians are struggling and, and, and you can see many clinicians to go, go into other fields 
Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, the colleague was mentioning, going to, to Target, Walmart, to other places, because they can see they're seeing more consistency in other, in other fields. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and people have to make a living, right? They have to pay their bills. Um, so something I think that Nicole said, and Tiffany talked about prevention, um, and the goal of this six meeting uh, mental health committee is to find figure out a way to prevent a crisis and we're we've talked about mental health checkups i think having enough community resources that definitely helps in preventing a crisis you know um when a pe- person um maybe goes in for a checkup just an annual mental health checkup we can you know maybe um cut some things off before they get worse. So we that's what one of our goals is as well. So um, at this time, is there anyone else that wants to share? Go ahead, Tiffany. Yeah, I just, I just had one last thought. Um, some of the clinicians newer, new, with newer agencies on the coalition have shared, you know, that it's difficult to get mass health on their panels. And, um, you know, as we're talking about, uh, making sure that we have clinicians that our youth can identify with, right? That look like them and have cultural backgrounds like them. Most of our youth have mass health and we have providers who are not able to get mass health on their panels. You know, that's a huge disadvantage to to both the clinicians and the youth. So uh, that I would say that's another barrier. Um, and then just in general, you know, what are we doing to address some of the structures of racism, right, that are built into these systems, you know, that make it difficult for some of these things to occur. And um, that's a huge barrier because it's embedded in, in, in every piece of sort of the pie, the mental health pie, right, and everything. So um, just wanted to verbally raise that and, and ask, you know, what are we doing to, to break down some of those systems? Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Um, I second that wholeheartedly. Um, does so? Anyone else have any comments, or uh, um, the legislature's offices? If you all want to um, comment, ask us questions. Maybe there's some things that you guys, you know, might want to know about. Well, if I if I may, and I, I know this is my first meeting, and so I don't want to talk about stuff that's already been talked about, but I'll mention this. Have you talked at all about the new? community behavior health centers that are coming online early in the new year? So actually, um, Kathy McHugh from BHN is going to be next month. She's going to tell us about that. But if you have some insight, you can talk to us. Yeah, about well, that so now. they're a provider. We're going to be one of the providers in the region as well. And so I wanted to share a little bit of good news in terms of resources available. Um, so those contracts were awarded and they're going to be coming online in the new year. Um, so CHD is going to be one of the big providers and BHN as well, where Kathy obviously were, uh, is from. But um, mental health urgent care is a significant component of that. Mm. And, uh, you know, obviously the idea of urgent care, which has been a medical model for a long time, is enhancing access, right? And right. hopefully using it appropriately. It's not a panacea, right? It doesn't solve all problems. And it certainly doesn't solve the problems as I think Jen talked about the absence of inpatient beds, right? So if you broaden the funnel, but the container doesn't get any bigger, you just have more people stuck in the funnel, right? And so I think that's kind of a concern with the mental health urgent care. But one of the big provisions of the CB, what we're calling the CBHC is a significant up, uh, upscaling of mental health urgent care services so people can get more rapid access as sort of a supplement to the crisis system. So, you know, I don't mm-hmm. want to just bellyache. I want to say that there is some good stuff happening and EOHHS has made some good decisions about how to improve the system of care. Now we just, you know, need to figure out these issues of wages, reimbursements, and obviously finding people to do these really, really life and death jobs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Ben. That's very important. Thank you so much for that. So I think um, going back to the mental health checkup days, I'm wondering um, how we can um, figure out a way to um, inform people about the opportunities for, like you said, um, Ben, the urgent care facilities, right? And then I know that 
primary care doctors are supposed to be doing kind of like a mental health checkup when you go in for your physical. Um, an example I have to use myself is the last time I hadn't had a physical through the pandemic. And then I got one the other, um, maybe last month, two months ago, and they did not ask me about my mental health. <laughs> um, you know, so they're supposed to be doing it, but are they doing it? Um, I know some Data. of them do. I have mm -hmm. to comment because I have kind of a running gag with my PCP and I won't name names. I'm at the point with that thing where I'm saying, what do I have to write on it to get him to pay attention to it? <laughs> How extreme do I have to get in terms of what I'm reporting? Because usually it's like, oh yeah, okay. And then he erases it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we might be depending on them, on the primary care physicians to do that, but they're not doing it, you know? So are we can we educate people about the urgent care and can people go to urgent care to get a mental health checkup? I don't know. So that's something that we might want to work out. Um, Jen, did you want to say something? I did. I wanted to ask, do you think they're not following up because they don't have a place to refer you to and they're just possible. trying to stave off the inevitable or that's do you possible. think there's just more of a stigma and they don't feel like it's their expertise. Uh, I, I don't, I'm yeah, curious. Yeah, I don't know no. what that what that barrier is. There are some doctors who okay. are going to use to ask about mental health. I know one doctor who's been in oh. our community, beloved, beloved doctor. He must be like 80, but he's still around. <laughs> he refuses to integrate mental health and um, primary care. He refuses, uh, but that's just one guy, you know? The one okay. that I had, I think he was a PA, you know, and I don't know if they're telling them that they need to do it. You know, I'm, okay. I'm sure if I would have said something, he might've done it. I don't know. Next time I see him, I will ask him, although you can't see the same person. Anyways, that's a whole nother problem. Um, so I don't I know. Just, that's a good question, Jen. I just wonder, well, and the pediatrician's offices that I've been involved with have, have been doing at least a brief screening, having people mm -hmm. fill it out on the form. Yeah. But I did want to say too about the economic development bill, just to go back to that. Mm -hmm. The Senator is a co-chair of that. Um, um, and he's been working at, obviously on his campaign, but obviously also on his actual job right now. And um, we're back in session starting, you know, today's September 1st, we're back in session this fall. Um, and so he is look, talking with leadership about how can we do this because it didn't get done. Um, at the end of session. And even though we might not get the whole thing done, we want to take out pieces that would be important and critical to move forward and have them uh, get to the governor's desk so that we can begin to push things into the 23, 24 implementation stage. So um, it is a priority. I just want to assure people that um, he is working on that. We're in touch with a lot of the offices and trying to make sure we understand scheduling and what we have to do. Yeah, yeah. And okay. we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, Cindy, Cindy, you had your hand up? I did, just um, briefly to touch on the question about the PCPs doing the mental health checkup. I think, speaking as a nurse, um, a lot of it is just sort of that supply and demand. You know, you got to get through the day, you got to get through the paperwork, you got to see the next patient. Also, the reimbursement. I mean, that's, we've been talking about that all night, and it is, it's atrocious. Um, and that creates a very cyclical thing that sends you almost in a rabbit hole, you know, where you try to see so many people so that you can earn a living. Um, and so I think it's more that than they're just not, I would say not blatantly not being bothered, but just like they got to move on sort of right. a thing. And, right. and then, you know, yes, then it's the referral process. And then it's yes, if you have the right insurance and, you know, all of these sort of, um, issues that need a safety net in mental in the field of mental health because we know that you know their insurance or you get a notice from mass health that says it's time to renew and it doesn't get done because they're they're already in a crisis that they've been in for a month already you know and then the insurance lapses and i think that's a huge safety net um red flag right there because i think a lot of people lapse in their insurance because they're just in the middle of crisis and they're not paying attention and, you know, they're, I don't want to say their workers need to, you know, social workers need to, you know, be on top. Like there's, you know, there's so much that maybe that's an implementation of some service that can be done 
you know, and paid for through some funding um, to help with those services and making sure that those things are getting done. Because I see so many people slip through the cracks, Mm -hmm. literally because their insurance lapsed, their mass health lapsed. Right, right. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, Jonathan, you had your hand raised. I'm sorry, did you um, wanna say something? And then Nicole had her hand raised. Go ahead, Nicole. Um, I won't take up too much time with this, but I'm just curious if part of the what you were just saying with the implementation of that is, I do think that that comes down to maybe creating some um, legislation around what the PCPs should be doing in the office, and maybe it does require them creating a role to do that, because I have found that they're working on doing that in most pediatrician offices where they are contracting with agencies like BHN and CHG and other places where they bring a behavioral intervention person into the office and that person strictly screens out mental health Um, and they make referrals. I personally had a coordinator that was like, okay, so this is what's going on and we're going to call all these people. They made all the referrals. They did everything. Um, So there, there is that role, that person, but I find that it's lacking in the adult health field. It's very much prevalent within the pediatric and youth field, but it gets forgotten in the adult field. It's almost like people who are 18 to about 60 don't go through crises. And then when you become a senior, all of a sudden mental health matters again. Um, So I think it does come down to creating some legislation of doing some sort of implementation of all people, all ages. That's Mm -hmm. all. Good. Thank you so much, Nicole. That's absolutely um, right. And I'm glad that it's happening at the pediatrician offices, though. That's excellent. Um, And hopefully with the Youth Mental Health Coalition, you guys can keep an eye on that. All right. Excellent. So yes, uh, anyone else? Just so you all know, this is an election year. I guess every year is and all elections matter. And I know that uh, Senator Lesser is running for Lieutenant Governor. Um, Rep Popolo is running again. He's he's unopposed, correct, Um, Sherry? Okay. And uh, Rep. Ramos is also unopposed, but of course they'll be on the ballot. So if you see them on the ballot, um, you see by their um, presence here, or their representative's presence here, I, you see that mental health is important to them. So um, we need to get them back in or in. Uh, Sherry, did you wanna say something? Um, oh, I, no, I, I realized when I said, <laughs> I responded before that I was muted. So that's you were muted, I, yes. I, that, I opened up just, just in case there was something else. I apologize for that. No, no worries, no worries. Hmm. All right, great. So I think this has been really good. Like I said, um, at the end of our six meetings, we're going to be putting a report together. And of course, we'll um, have, be having the input of the state legislatures, which I'm, which I'm really, really happy about. Next month is our last meeting. Um, I, can't, I can't forget if we met in May. So May, June, July, August, September. Yeah, October will be our last meeting. Um, and maybe we'll get uh, the health insurance companies to come out um, and see if they can hear our concerns and maybe we can hear their concerns. Maybe they have some concerns that they wanna share with us. Um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Cause you know, I don't know if they like to come out too much. All right, if there, are there any other questions or concerns that we wanna to share tonight? Excellent. Well, I wanna thank you all so much for coming out. Um, this is a group effort. I'm so excited for the collaboration that is happening in the city of Springfield right now regarding mental health, the Youth Mental Health Coalition, um, all the agencies that are represented, represented in the mental health subcommittee. Um, I think it's vital that we stick together, that we work together and that we just continue moving forward. Um, you know, the whole state, we need to work together and have Boston, you know, pay attention to Western Mass. So, and this is how we're gonna do it by making some noise. 
All right. Well, you all have a good night. Thank you so much for coming out.